Hello guys and thank you for joining me for my next video. So I had a video come across my desk and it is excellent. I mean I just couldn't ask for a better video for everything that I've been talking about as far as liberal Christians or uh, progressive Christians, whatever you want to call them. And I think it really boils down to two things, two two ways that you can see how conservative and a liberal mindset, right? So conservative mindset just wants to keep the rules or laws or whatever the way that they are. They want to keep them small, basic. We're not trying to like make too many rules. We're just trying to do these. And then the more liberal, the more progressive you get, the more rules seem to be tacked on. Which is uh, funny because in this definition for one of these uh, progressive Christians, they're saying, you know, it becomes harder or bad whenever you start adding on more, which is exactly what they do. But anyway, let's, uh, let's dive into this. Um, so this gentleman, Kurt, talks about how um, they have rules for being progressive and then you're supposed to add those rules to what the Bible says. Now that's the Bible itself says in Deuteronomy 4 2 that I have on the screen here, you shall not add to the word that I command you nor take from it that you can keep the commandments of God. Okay, so you're not supposed to be adding more. This is this is what it is. We've settled here. This is what we're doing. Then it has a second one in Revelation that's about Revelation itself. It says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So Revelation is not to be touched at all. This is what it is. Take it for what it is, whether you understand it or not. In Deuteronomy, they're talking about the laws of God, how you're not supposed to add or subtract from them. If you if you are one of those people who are saying, but we do it all the time, okay, then we're wrong. <laughs> and we shouldn't do it, and we should go back to what God says. All right, so I just wanted to stop right there and um, talk about that part too. Because a lot of people will say that. They'll be like, but we do it all the time. Well, it doesn't matter. Ooh, what happened? I don't know what happens. So let's just go over to Kurt. Take their life. There are rules that are associated uh, with being progressive. The problem comes in when people try to create unnecessary boundaries. So interesting, right? So from their own mouths, they have a second set of rules that they're playing by. So to me, this is like, okay, so you're not really, you're taking Christianity and just using it as like your secondary then. Because their first is the progressive rules because they apply the progressive rules first if you watch this video. So really they're progressive first and Christian second. And the Bible's very clear you can't you're not Christian second. You're Christian or you're not. And you may be screwing up, you may be not doing things right, you may not understand something correctly and do it wrong, stuff like that. But you either are or you're not. There is no like I am Christian which I am Christian blah blah, blah. I am Christian blah blah blah. It's not that. You either are or you're not. So in the next clip that I think really answers, this is the biggest one to me, they say that they don't believe that the words of Paul, no, sorry, they don't believe that the Bible is God. They think that the word's inspired, but that it's not God. So a conservative Christian such as myself would say, this is the inerrant word of God inspired by him. This is where you find him, how you know him. One of the ways. And they would say, no, it's up to interpretation. So one of the ways that I show people this, that this is not just Paul writing, think, doing what he thinks is the best, is these verses that you can see on the screen, 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 1 Corinthians 7, 25, and 2 Corinthians eleven seventeen, are three instances where Paul is talking about, well, let's see, let me read one. 725, I think is the first one I ever saw. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give as an opinion as one who by the mercy of the Lord is trustworthy. So after this, when he's talking about the virgins and marriage and all this stuff, 
after this, this is Paul's opinion after having been, uh, I want to say with God, we'll say it that way, for as long as he's been. He bases his opinion on what he's seen God do in the past, what he's seen God care about, etc. So you can have one right there where he's like, no, this isn't the command of God. This is not what God is saying to me. This is just what I think he would probably say. 11.17 out of 2 Corinthians, that which I am speaking, I am not speaking as the Lord would. So this is not God saying, this is not a command from God, but as in foolishness in this confidence of boasting. Okay, he's here. I need to get more context with that one. But here he's sort of like, you know, um, this is not God talking here. So we have delineation. We have things versus situations where the writers are like, okay, this isn't God speaking. This is me. So we have ways to see that. This is def God definitely spoke to people and they definitely wrote it down in the Bible. And this is his words. It's, it's not any different than any one of us using a typewriter or anything else. This is, those would still be our thoughts. Those would still be what we wanted to say. That this would still be us. So for, for a progressive Christian, the Bible is not this, is not God talking to them. So this is why they can take it and just do whatever they want with it. This is why they do that. So let's watch that right quick. Go back to like the inerrancy of, of scripture, which I see a lot in conservative church. I do not believe the words of Paul are the words of God. And that's definitely where we veer off for a lot of people. That's a big thing. Like we believe that just all scripture, including that which Paul wrote was inspired by God. And so- No, I believe it's all inspired by God, but I don't believe it's literally God. The only reason I'm going in on this is to clarify that we love and honor the Bible too. So other than the obvious in that clip, what I find the most interesting is they, Brenda especially, wants people to think, you know, we love God just as much as you do. Okay, but in saying that, beforehand you just denied every single word he brought here. If you're a Christian, then the Bible is central to your life. It has to be where you get your everything from. If you're going to say, well, we love God in the Bible just like you do, but then you're going to toss out certain things it says or reimagine what it says or say, you know, no, this isn't God in any way. Um, this book is the thing that tells everybody, you know, who God is, what he wants you to do, what he thinks about this, what he doesn't think, um, how he interacted with people. It tells you everything. So from the moment that you say, this is not what this is not god it's just inspired by him but it's not god himself you delegitimize i can't think of the right word you basically are saying but I, i'm a christian but i don't really believe any of the christian stuff except for the stuff i choose to believe go and watch this video in the very beginning of the video the progressive Christians are about love and openness and talking, which I'm not saying is wrong. It's just that can't be everything. Just like the law can't be everything. The, there has to be grace and mercy and forgiveness so that you can move on to, to changing the way God wants us to change. But it's all that they want. So as someone who's just a regular Christian out here trying to live their life day to day, I'm not, I'm no kind of, I am no leader in the church. I have nothing like that as far as like, I don't teach anything, nothing like that. I can see that that's wrong, that you basically can't logically say that. You can't logically say, oh, all love. And you can't logically say, oh, all law, because then the law would condemn us all and the love makes none of us change. So you have to have a mix of, t of the two in order to get to where God wants us to be. God wants us to recognize that, hey, yeah, we're born sinners. We have proclivities towards the negative, selfishness, do this for me, what I want, all the way towards the really negative stuff where we're at this point now, the meanness has become 
I'm going to kill all these people so I can get what I want, so I can satisfy something inside of myself that really only God can satisfy. So this is the major disconnect between progressives and conservatives. And this carries across everywhere, including politics. Progressives are all about, we just want to love you and help you, but they are the overbearing mother who does it all for you. And then you're limp and worthless and you can't do anything. And the conservatives are trying to be the encouraging father and the encouraging mother type thing where <clears throat> you are allowed to do things on your own. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to do things just straight wrong <laughs> and then punished and then show mercy or corrected, however you want to put it, because there is such thing as correction inside the church. So <clears throat> it's not the correction that you deserve. It's the correction that makes you change your line. So you're going down this way. This correction makes you change and go this way, more straight, more towards what God wants you to do. To me, this is simply where it's at. This is the divide that makes everything that anytime you see someone doing something that's like a progressive or a conservative, you don't understand why, this is why, this is what's going on. A progressive, a, a conservative Christian is going to say, don't give in to your sin. A progressive Christian is going to say, well, but if you do sin, it's okay. And then there's mercy and there's all this stuff, but then not tell you, but don't give into it. You need to be getting better at it. You, you need to be exercising the muscles of, you know, prayer, the muscle of, um, reading your Bible on a daily basis, anytime outside of Sunday, like Sunday, most people, they go to church, the Bible sits in their lap and sometimes they read it and sometimes they don't. So you need to be reading your Bible and studying yourself. You need to be communing with God on your own. So at a certain point, if you're not doing these things, then that is where other people in the church are supposed to be, you know, challenging you in a pro and that's, that is what would happen in a conservative sort of situation. You would be challenged. Hey, why aren't you reading this stuff? Um, what's going on in your life? A progressive would be like, no, that's fine. You can just do whatever you want because it's all about love and to them, love does not correct. So there's your major difference. And I just thought it was great because it, they, they just say it. And if you ever have any doubts at all as to what the progressive Christian mindset is, here you go, here it is. <laughs> so you never have to doubt. You never have to wonder. All right. So thank you for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. And remember guys to pray and read your Bible and go out there, tell people what God has done for you. Tell people why you follow him. Be an active Christian. All right. Bye.